Hi, I'm Mark. This is my 2022 review for Gemini Sun Sign and Gemini Rising. Uh, this is a very eventful year. We have lots of positive energy uh, and the main mover of the year is Jupiter. Now, Jupiter um, changes sign and house, moves into Pisces. Um, now, Jupiter rules Pisces with uh, Neptune. These are co-rulers together. Um, and these two will come together later on in the month. Uh, more about that, but first of all, uh, on the 1st of January we will have uh, Jupiter uh, in Pisces and in your 10th house. So this is in your 10th house till uh, the 11th of May. So there's time to really work with this energy now. And this is positive energy because this can really get you ahead. Jupiter can take you to new places, to new heights. There's time to get recognised now, um, either in your public standing, uh, your career or your chosen path. It's time to really progress and make some um, achievable goals um, that you should be able to achieve with reasonable um, energy levels here. Um, there's nothing uh, that Jupiter makes hard, not like Saturn. Saturn makes work, hard work of things, which Jupiter will allow easy flow. And because it's in Pisces, which is a fellow mutable sign, uh, Gemini should easily be able to harness that energy. On the 14th of January, uh, your ruler Mercury goes retrograde for the first time in the year. Um, and this is in uh, Aquarius going backwards into uh, uh, Capricorn. So again, this is not a uh, reason to stop pushing ahead with Jupiter, but it's just a cautious note to be mindful. Because when Mercury is retrograde, uh, communications get muddled up, um, things can be misunderstood. So just be sure that you listen carefully um, and you double check things, you dot the, dot the I's and cross the T's, make sure everything is, is nicely laid out and nicely in order so that you don't get any upsets or uh, sudden surprises. Then on the uh, 18th, um, Uranus is in your 12th house, go station direct and will slowly start to move forward coming out of the shadow period until the uh, 24th of August. Now, this will mean uh, there could be a bit of a deja vu going on here. You could think, well, I've been through this before. I've, I've seen this and done this, but this is a chance to revisit things. It's a chance to get things really right while Uranus is going direct. Now, this is directly related to your unconscious, so it might be difficult to get to grips with this, but there will be um, uh, unconscious desires coming through uh, to change and to put things right. So if you're saying to yourself, oh, I'm fed up with this, I've been doing this for too long, it is time to start making these changes. And there will be a slow awakening. This is not going to happen overnight because Uranus moves very slowly. There will be a slow awakening to things that um, need changing in your life. On the 19th of uh, January, we have another change. This time it's the North Node and the South Node changing sign and house. Now the North Node, currently uh, has been in your sign of Gemini, moves out of your sign and into Taurus. The South Node consequently moves uh, from the 7th house into the 6th house and into Scorpio. So there's going to be a big shift now over the next year or so. Um, the shift will be towards uh, Taurus and Scorpio and these will be areas of growth. So this is your 12th and 6th house. Now, the challenge here is to balance the uh, conscious mind with the unconscious mind. The spiritual realm with the uh, material mundane realm. And this you'll be able to work with over the, the next year to 18 months. Now, the concentration of energy will also be in Taurus. So this is about uh, earth matters. This is about material side. This is about your security. Um, and it's also about Scorpio, which is in the sixth house. So Scorpio is about um, being more in depth, uh, uncovering things, looking deep into things um, with some passion and some, and some real uh, commitment. So this is where you may be able to make changes in your health, diet, fitness, and also your uh, daily routines. On February the 4th, all planets are moving in a direct motion. Now this is great because it's a good time to tune in and, and really achieve. Um, on the 1st of March, we have a triple conjunction. This is between Pluto, Mars and Venus. Now these three together make very intense and passionate energy. Um, this is happening in your 8th house. This is the house ruled by Mars and Pluto, so they're very, very comfortable in this position. 
Now Mars Pluto energy is very ruthless ambition. It's a time when you'll want to get on and achieve things. Uh, with Venus is more inclined to the artistic side and the creative side. Also it's very passionate and the eighth house is the house of sex so it's a time of great passion and desire. Um, the other thing we need to be mindful of is that in the eighth house um, it's the house of perception. It's the house of gaining knowledge about um, things that uh, are kind of like psychological. So you'll be very in tune with this, very intuitive and it's a good time to read into things and to uh, find out exactly where you stand with people. And it's a good time to share as well because the eighth house is about sharing with others. So share this energy or combine this energy with other people and you'll achieve a lot more. On the 5th of April we have Mars who's now in your ninth house coming up to Saturn. Now Mars in the ninth house wants to make changes, have new adventures, learn new things. Uh, but when he approaches Saturn, it's best to calm things down and just stick to tried and tested methods uh, because the Saturn energy is very limited on Mars and you may find that you're banging your head against a brick wall. So best to just go with the normal routines that you have and not to push things too far forward at this time. I'll leave it a few days and then uh, things will calm down and Mars can move forward. Then on the 12th of April we have uh, the biggest conjunction of the year. This is the coming together of Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces. Now this hasn't happened since 1856, um, so it's a fair while since we've experienced this. And it could bring about a cultural change. This is going to be great for the arts and for creators and industries involved in, in uh, the artistic and creative side of things. Now, it may be, because this is in your 10th house, that you decide to change your, your role, change the field that you work in, or, or decide to do something that's more artistic and creative, um, because this is in your 10th house of destiny and career. Um, and it's also a good time for getting involved with um, anything that uh, involves learning. This is Jupiter. Jupiter expands. Jupiter takes on more information and pushes you to do this. And Neptune is about uh, the imagination. So this is uh, a real growth period for us all. Um, and it's fantastic for um, spiritual. There'll be an uplift in spiritual energy. Also, there'll be um, more compassion around. This will help us to get over the last uh, couple of years um, when we've had the pandemic. And this will help us recover from the, the losses that we've had. Jupiter and Neptune are together in Pisces at 23 degrees. Now two and three together is a uh, coming together of knowledge with creativity and diplomacy. And two and three make five. Five is about change. It's about change to our uh, daily routines, change to what we know as the familiar. Now also, uh, with these two, we have two of the great gods coming together. We have Jupiter, the king of the gods, and Neptune, the king of the waves, the king of the sea. So there could be uh, an excess of water, there could be a lot of rain, um, there could be earthquakes, as Neptune are all earthquakes, and um, generally there could be a lot of flooding around while these two uh, are together in Pisces. Now, at the end of the month, Venus joins them. Now, Venus will add her aesthetic qualities to these two. So this is good for romance, this is good for finances as well, and it's good for the arts again. It will add another dimension to the creativity that these two will produce. We have a very reactive end to uh, April on the 29th. Uh, Jupiter makes a positive sextile aspect with Pluto. Now this will enable you to put some of the changes in place that you've uh, come across with the uh, conjunction with Neptune. This will enable you to seize power in a way, because Pluto represents power. And again, with Jupiter in your 10th uh, house, this is a time to use that power wisely, to use it within your career or in your public standing, and to turn yourself onto the right path of destiny. Um, now this uh, aspect is particularly good for keeping faith. So now is a time to, to keep faith within yourself and within your abilities so that you can steer yourself in the right direction and propel yourself into the future. On the 30th of April we have our first eclipse of the year. And this is a partial solar eclipse in Taurus. This is your 12th house. 
Now, uh, this is a time when you need to just step back a bit and, and look at things from a distance. Not get too close on things because you need to make some decisions. And there'll be things coming your way from this eclipse that you need to take very seriously. So it's time to just step back, recharge your batteries until these things uh, start happening. Now, uh, this series of eclipses is renowned for uh, bringing forth relationships with authority figures. And at this time, or coming over the next few months, uh, there could be um, times when you need to step forward and take responsibility. Now, this could be due to someone else's illness or something, uh, the inability of someone else to carry out their work, you may ask to step up and take responsibility. And you need to accept these commitments going forward. That's why you need to just step back and take stock of where you are at this moment in time because there will be lots of changes coming in the future. This, this eclipse is also conjunct Uranus in, in your uh, sign of Taurus 12th house. So things may happen very suddenly. There may be very quick changes that you need to adjust to uh, within the uh, uh, unconscious area as well. So you will need to get your head around things very quickly if you are offered these uh, commitments and responsibilities. May sees the change from Jupiter being in Pisces going into Aries. And again, this is going to affect you because it moves into your 11th house. This will affect your aims, your goals and dreams for the future. So time to plan now. Think about what you're going to do. Aries is a sign of initiative and action, so it's time to put things into place. It may be time that you want to change the world, um, and that's good. Make all the changes you can, but it's best to do that alongside with other people. Because this is the 11th house of friends and groups, so get involved with these people, do some networking, and you can achieve much more with others than you ever will on your own. On the 10th of May, your ruler Mercury goes retrograde for the second time, um, and is retrograde when the next uh, eclipse happens. And this is a total lunar eclipse, and this is in um, Scorpio. So this is a very different feel to this one, although it belongs to the same series and has the same theme, this is happening in your sixth house. This is your daily routines, your daily work, uh, your exercise, diet and health. So there could be changes that come up here as well. Now, with uh, Mercury retrograde, you just need to be uh, very upfront and very careful. You need to listen well and understand what people are saying. Don't just take half of what people are saying and run off with, with an idea. Listen correctly so that you get the whole story um, because communication can be very mixed up during these times. Um, now the other thing about uh, Scorpio is its intensity. So there's a great intensity surrounding your, your routines at this moment and it's time also to focus um, uh, on the conscious, on getting tasks completed. This is time to apply yourself um, to your work or to your daily routines. Things quieten down with Neptune and Jupiter as they both go retrograde. Neptune at the uh, end of June and uh, uh, Jupiter at the end of July. But Uranus steps up then because on the 31st of July Uranus conjuncts the North Node. Now if you remember this is in your 12th house. This is a time when things will happen um, on an unconscious level. Um, doors may open. Um, you may be pointed in a certain direction but there will be life transformations that will be taking place and uh, any signs or messages that you receive at this time will be very, very important. Now Uranus can bring about positive, positive change um, and with the North Node being your spiritual uh, way forward, this could be um, a great time for aligning yourself with your new path. On September the 9th, Mercury enters its uh, third retrograde motion of the year, uh, but he's clear by the time the next eclipse happens. Now this is a partial solar eclipse and it belongs to the Saros 6 South series of eclipses, which is renowned for uh, bringing power and control within situations. And for you, uh, this happens in Scorpio and it's your sixth house. So this is time to take power and control of your, uh, of your diet, of your health, of your exercise and of your daily routines. This is time for you to be in control. This is time for you to get things sorted. Concentrate on those areas. 
Uh, and with the sixth house, it's about organisation, it's about analysis. And with this being in Scorpio, the analysis can go very deep. Uh, it can penetrate with Scorpio. So you can really get to the bottom of things. If you have any health issues, you can get to the bottom of this and consult professionals. If you have issues at work, because this also affects your daily work and routines, then again, you can get to the bottom and sort these out. Now, it could also be beneficial for relationships because this Eclipse series is renowned for manifesting power within relationships. This is a good time to work within your relationships or with partners. Um, but it's also a good time to find love and passion in life as well. On the 8th of November we have the last uh, major astrological event happening in 2022 and this is a total lunar eclipse which happens in Taurus which also means that the Sun is in uh, Scorpio um, so these two are opposite. Now, this eclipse summarises everything we've been talking about during this uh, year and it brings it all together. This is quite a major, major event because we have the Sun opposite the Moon, obviously, but then we have the Moon who's applying to Uranus and uh, the South Node. At the other end we have the Sun who's applying to Mercury and is also conjunct the North Node. So, this is powerful enough as it is with this opposition, but um, Saturn squares both ends of this opposition. Saturn's in your ninth house and he's banging in the middle and he's going to cause some considerable amount of uh, pain if you are stuck in your ways. You have to be open to change. Now Saturn will bring a mentor or a teacher or a guide along at this time to help you and you need to be mindful of this and take notice of the advice that they give. It could be in any form um, but the advice will be valuable for you. And the advice I can give you is to focus on um, the empty sector because Saturn forms a T-square. T-squares are a challenging aspect um, and there is an empty square in the cross, so to speak. If you concentrate energy in this empty square, it will help to even things out. And this is uh, the third house for you. So this is the mundane. This is the everyday routines, everyday tasks. If you keep up to date with those, concentrate on those, get them finished, it'll help to balance all the other energies that are going on. I'm not saying ignore the other energies because you need to pay them attention, but keep focused on the, um, the everyday third house and this will form a cross rather than a T and this will help the energy to flow freely. And this will help you to deal with anything that comes up at this time. And it's likely to be something to do uh, with balancing your conscious and unconscious. It's likely to be balancing the spiritual and the material world. And it's most likely to involve responsibilities and commitments as we spoke of earlier. So this all comes together at the end of the year, so there's a lot to work on. Thank you for watching the review. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And if you'd like to leave me a comment, I'd be glad to hear from you.